Hi, Steve Kaufman here uh, to talk again about language learning, my passion, one of my passions. Um, thank you for all of those who commented, uh, you know, this campaign we have, what would you like to talk to me about uh, with regard to language learning? I may very well incorporate some of these questions in future videos, but we are going to have a draw on uh, February the 2nd uh, to see who is going to actually sit down with me and discuss these things. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Today I want to talk about giving yourself the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to explain to you what that means and I think that's very important in language learning, if not in life. Uh, you know, I sit there and I work on my Arabic, so I read, I listen, don't always fully understand. I do our activities at link, uh, flashcards, multiple choice, dictation, to kind of get into the words and phrases that appear in the lesson. Uh, I'm doing it both in, uh, you know, sentence view and then the whole lesson. And, and, you know, there are times when I might question, you know, will I ever learn this language? Will I ever get to a point where I can actually understand this language? And uh, so I say to myself, of course I will. In other words, I give myself the benefit of the doubt. If I stay with it long enough, if I continue doing what I'm doing, I will learn the language. And I use this principle in a variety of ways. For example, one of the things I do at Link is I go through the lesson and I pick words that I now kind of more or less know or at least understand in context and I move them to known. I'm a little, I'm getting ahead of myself a bit. I wouldn't be able to use those words uh, in speaking. In fact, I can't speak in Arabic, but I'm moving them along because then when I look at a page uh, at Link, there are fewer yellow words and there are more white words that presumably are known. I focus in on the ones that I still don't understand even in context, but I give myself the benefit of the doubt. There's no big a risk there because if I come across a word that I don't understand, I just save it again. So there's no damage, but it also gives me a sense of confidence. Oh, look at me. I've, you know, I've increased my known word count. My known word counted link in Arabic is up to five or 600 words. Probably a, a lot of those I wouldn't even understand if I saw them, I might have trouble reading them, but I'm giving myself the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and I have found that to be a good strategy. So uh, these words that I keep forgetting, will they ever, you know, really sock in there so that I, I, I recognize them and I can use them. I have no doubt that, they that, that I will, that they will eventually stick. I give myself the benefit of the doubt. And I think this is very important when we're speaking, for example. Uh, if, uh, okay, Arabic, I can't really speak, but languages that I speak, if I'm forever second guessing myself, is this the correct form or is that the correct form? I just give myself the benefit of the doubt. Whatever phrase pops into my mind as I'm speaking, I try to use it. Um, you know, how did I do? Did I speak well or did I not speak well? Forget it. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, that's not to say you won't make mistakes. You will, but you're better off not questioning yourself. You're better off to just go with it. And I mean, if you think, for example, um, I was in a taxi in Vancouver and the taxi driver was originally from Iran and he said when they emigrated to Canada, his son was six years old and went to school and he was afraid and couldn't speak and stuff. And within a few months, the teacher wrote a letter uh, to this, this father saying, your kid is talking too much in class. In other words, the kid just fitted in. He wasn't doubting whether he could communicate. Very quickly, he was communicating. And so I think that is in a, an important sort of uh, attitude to have, to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. And I think too often, even like, like teachers fuss too much and they want to protect kids or they, you know, I, I remember, uh, for example, when I first started into creating a language learning platform, I was involved with uh, immigrants to Vancouver from China. And uh, I said, well, you know, maybe we should, set up a program where these uh, kids who live in a very, you know, in an area of Vancouver, where there are lots of Chinese kids, uh, send them to the interior, to some small town, to a camp, live in with a family or whatever, say the Kamloops. And of course the, the Chinese ethnic association said, well, you know, a Chinese family would never let their kids go to a, a camp like that uh, because there's no multicultural associate, uh, you know, <laughs> infrastructure in those little towns. 
Yeah, the kid will do just fine. Don't worry about a multicultural infrastructure. In fact, there's all kinds of Chinese families that send their kids to Vancouver, put them in, park them in a high school, and they live in China, and the kids are left to fend for themselves. So, you know, again, that's quite typical, by the way, that any of these sort of uh, interest groups that have an organization, the spokespeople for the organization claim to speak for the whole community, whereas in fact, if you polled the community, you'd find that these leaders of the uh, you know, Chinese Ethnic Association aren't necessarily represented. But that's another issue. So, uh, give yourself the benefit of the doubt, don't, and give learners the benefit of the doubt. And I think this is important in life. Like if I think back to when I was young, so many times I hesitated. If I just give myself the benefit of the doubt and go for it, what's the worst case? The worst case is probably still going to be better than if you doubt yourself. So tip of the day if you want when it comes to language learning and other things, give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You may be quite pleasantly surprised. Bye for now. Hi there. Hi. I'm back here, give myself the benefit of the doubt. I had one of my viewers who teaches Arabic, excuse me, speaks English to Syrian refugees, wanted me to say something in Arabic. I can't really say anything in Arabic, but I can try to read. Remember, my focus in learning any language is to go three months, six months listening and reading before I actually start speaking. But I thought I'd just give this a try. Uh, reading in Arabic, for me at least, isn't easy because uh, it's not obvious how the, you know, where the vowels slot in and so forth, but we'll give it a try, see what happens. Hevehi kisak Ahmed illadhi yamal tabakh. Ahmed who works as a cook. Yastekut Ahmed kol sabakh fil sa'a as-serisa. Gets up every morning at six. Yehadr al Father makes breakfast. Wa yasherubul kahua. Kahua. He drinks coffee. Um, what's that now? Yakuru yakur yakuru sari sayarata ile amel drives to work. Amel yevda fil asa. Uh, sabia, uh, sabia, uh, wa nufs, uh, sabah. I think that'll do. <laughs> that's enough of massacring the Arabic language. I hope that's encouraging to uh, these learners. We all struggle, but if we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt, we will eventually get there. We just have to stay with the program. Bye for now.